All right, you get the audio going? Okay. Yeah. Center her and zoom in just slightly. All right. How long have you lived in Walt Hill personally? So I have lived in Walt Hill since 2007. So I was a senior in high school. Um, off and on, I moved back to Fremont and then came back to Walt Hill. So I've been living here ever since then. Why would you stay in Walt Hill for all this time? Well, first of all, I know that it was the Lord that brought me here. Um, it wasn't me that was like, oh, I think it's a good idea to come and live in Walt Hill of all places. Um, my, all my family's from Walt Hill. And as we, we would come up during the weekends um, to visit family, um, obviously it was not really a nice place to come to um, at the time. So there was nothing in me when I was younger to be like, oh yeah, I want to come live on the Omaha Indian Reservation. Yes. It was just like, I knew it was the Lord um, that led me here, start the start of my senior year of high school. Um, and why I would want to stay here is because obviously this is uh, where the Lord wants me. Um, I work at Walt Hill Public School and I'm able to build relationships with the, the kids there. And I've seen what the Lord has done in some of them over the years. And uh, I mean, if the Lord wants me to move somewhere else, then obviously uh, he would have to show me that and I would have to be obedient to go where he would want me to go. But I've been on different mission trips over the last couple of years, uh, went to different countries, but I know that here on the Omaha Indian Reservation, we do have a great mission field because a lot of the people here, I think, have not rejected the gospel. They just haven't heard the true, true gospel. So that, that's why I stay here is because I see the need. And uh, I don't know, the Lord's, the Lord's faithful and he's, he's doing what only he can do here. What's your connection with Light of the World? So back when I started um, going to high school at Bancroft Rosalie in 2007, I had moved from Fremont and I lived with my grandparents that live right outside of town. And um, I always grew up in church. We went, my family took me when we were younger. Um, so I was, you know, I, grew, I was a church kid, right? That's uh, just what you did on Sunday. Um, but my grandma one Sunday in November was like, hey, there's a new minister in town. He's from Ireland. You want to come with me to church? And at that time, my grandma um, had been going to like house churches and stuff where I was like, sure, I'll go. And that's just kind of how it started. How long have you been a youth group leader? Uh, that's a great question because I don't even remember. Um, I just remember probably back in possibly 2016, um, Peter, Destiny and I kind of ran the youth together and that's as far back as I can remember because before that I would attend youth group but I wasn't like a leader. Youth groups started back in I think late 2007, early 2008 if I can remember. It only started with three individuals. It was actually Cameron Brumman, Shelby Bushol, and me. And me and Cameron were seniors in high school and Shelby was a junior. And I think we were kind of like, hey, we, we want to learn more about the Lord. And so um, Pastor Paul and then the assistant pastor at the time, Aaron Trimble, uh, started uh, a youth group on Wednesday nights. We started at Pastor Paul's house and we outgrew that space and we went to the fire hall and then when we got this new church building then we we started having church here so um it's grown in numbers obviously but i think the maturity went from receiving to giving i think that's the biggest step that i've seen over the years of this youth group is it's not about us it's about us looking out to other people and uh encouraging them how would you describe being in a leadership position with you well, anything that you do for the Lord, there's always going to be a battle um, because there's a devil out there who wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. Um, he doesn't want us to be close to the Lord, and especially he doesn't want us to serve the Lord. So I think um, in any aspect of ministry, whatever you're doing, whether it's the nursery, whether it's children's church, whether it's doing the media, or even you know being a pastor as Pastor Paul is, or just uh, going to do visits, anything that you do for the Lord, there's always going to be a kickback from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it, there are battles. I mean, I have to battle against my greatest enemy, which is myself, to come on a Wednesday, to you know, come on a Tuesday, come on a Sunday, just a normal Christian battles that we go through. Um, so I would say it is, um, it is difficult, but it's so much, re it's rewarding because I know that uh, what the Lord calls you to do, he's gonna provide. Mm -hmm. And I know that 
he's with me through it, you know, preparing messages, preparing topics. Um, I'm not perfect. There's times where I fail and I'm like, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. Maybe this is just me. But just knowing that he's with me and I'm not alone, we can only give others what we have ourselves. And so if I'm, you know, not in the word, if I'm not seeking the Lord, if I'm just doing my own thing, then I'm not going to be able to minister on to the young people that come in on Wednesday and the struggles that go they go through. Um, but I mean, I know that everything that we go through is for a reason. And I could see just through my past and the things that the Lord has allowed me to go through until now, just how we're able just to uh, minister onto other people. Because if we don't go through the battles, if we don't go through the struggles that we have in this life, then we wouldn't need the Lord and we wouldn't be able to empathize with other people that have gone through similar situations that we've gone through. Pastor Paul always uses this analogy. He likes to watch the natural geographic. He likes to watch the animals and stuff and uh, with the lions and the zebra, right? So the lion goes after the one that's kind of over by itself or the one that's injured or weak and that's who he attacks. And so I think I've just seen that uh, the devil is very good about attacking the vulnerable and maybe like the baby Christians that kind of just coming into church, coming into the word, you know, and just wants to cause that shame and that guilt and that condemnation. They're not as strong in the faith as they could be. So the devil attacks. So the comfort that the Lord has given to us, then we are able to give to others. I just praise the Lord that we're able just the, the stepping stones, we're moving closer to getting our new church building. And this church isn't just for us. Um, it's for this community. It's for the Umaha Indian Reservation um, because we have a heart for, for the people. So just to see that this church is going to be a lighthouse, not only to this community, uh, but to Northeast Nebraska yes. into the United States. And I know that what the Lord is raising up in our church, the small church uh, in Walt Hill, um, he's going to send out, you know, teachers and pastors and evangelists. Yes. And it's just only time will tell. I think right now the Lord's just building us up and just uh, putting us on that solid foundation where he can send us out and use us the way that he wants us to. Yeah. And then hopefully there are people that stay in Walt Hill too <laughs> with a new building. And, yeah. and obviously we'll have the cafeteria and the bookstore and that'll be open 24 seven. So it's not only just going to be a church. It's going to be a ministry where people can come in and just have coffee and fellowship. And um, that's what I'm most looking forward to because a lot of people nowadays, they won't step foot in a church. Um, but if they want coffee or food or a book, then that's just an open opportunity for us to share the gospel with them. All right. You hardly asked me any of those questions. <laughs> <laughs>